Hi, people. Well, my dad was born in Atlanta and went to the University of North Carolina, and uh, there he met my mother, uh, Sadie Rice, who was a Belton native. He was in the Second World War and served in the uh, Atlantic. He was on the runs of the convoys to Russia, supplying them with ammunition and equipment. And then he came back from that and uh, was assigned to a destroyer in the Pacific, where he stayed for uh, two and a half, three years. But uh, after the war, he went to work in Rome, Georgia, for a uh, furniture store. But about a year later, he moved back to Belton and he opened Maynard's Furniture. There was a row of three buildings on the north end of the square where Wells Fargo Bank building is now. And uh, he rented one of those buildings and uh, had, had the furniture on, on two levels, first and second floor. I remember an old elevator in that building. And uh, it was very antique, I remember that. But uh, I also remember going to that store and uh, going up to the second floor and watching the Christmas parade out the window so you didn't have to worry about people in front of you. So that was always a lot of fun. And back in the, in the late 40s, early 50s, the Christmas parade was really a big deal. Uh, he started selling primarily uh, used furniture and uh, some appliances because new furniture was hard to get right after the war. It was himself and uh, Mr. John Campbell and then he had a delivery man. So there were three of them that started that. They were on the square for about four years and he built this store, I think it was 1951. So far out in the country at that time, it was called Maynard's Wayside Furniture. And of course, obviously since then, uh, it, uh, the city has grown out this way and, and you know, for years we were known as Mel Maynard's of Belton and now we're known as Maynard's Home Furnishings. At that time, most of the furniture was coming out of North Carolina. He would go to the furniture market in High Point, North Carolina. And uh, he'd also go, to, there was a big furniture market in Chicago and he'd go there as well. And uh, there he, he made, uh, uh, or there he would make purchases of, of, of furniture. And, and of course, by the 50s, uh, it was easier to get uh, uh, new furniture. And also, when he moved out here, he uh, upgraded the quality of, of the furniture that we offered and expanded the market because originally he was primarily doing business in Belton. But when he moved out here on the highway, then he expanded to Anderson and, and obviously uh, other areas soon after that. I was the next to the last class to graduate from Belton High School before Belton Honeypath combined. And uh, I went to Walford College where I graduated in 1969 and I always knew I wanted to be a part of this business and so I had worked out here in the summers from the time I was about 12 years old and uh, all the way through college. So as soon as I graduated from college in 1969, I came to work full time here. Well, I guess I was like most boys and I, I wanted to be like my dad and emulate him as much as I could. And I knew he worked hard because I, I knew the, the hours he had to keep and uh, such as when I was a child, but I also knew by running his own business that uh, he had control of, of his, his time. And, and uh, I liked that and I liked the furniture business and uh, I've, I've always been a people person, like people. And so it just seemed to fit and it was just the natural thing to do. Certainly as a family-owned business, he was one of the first, if not basically the first, uh, to get on TV because TV was something that you kind of looked at as uh, people that uh, were big companies that had a lot of money uh, would afford to do. But my dad, he was a visionary and a, an entrepreneur, and he, he saw the potential, I think, of us reaching out beyond uh, where we were uh, as far as customers are concerned, and especially into the Greenville market. Greenville was, was growing rapidly, and also the area uh, between Belton and Greenville, uh, the, the Piedmont area, the Easley area. And so he realized that and, and went on TV. And he, he decided from the very get-go that he wanted to do his own commercials. And so that's where the Hello Nice People, I'm, I'm Al Maynard, which uh, gravitated to me, uh, Hello Nice People, I'm Rex Maynard. And uh, I continued that tradition. My dad turned the uh, advertising, TV and radio advertising over to me in 1977. And uh, so I did it from, from that point, uh, I guess, until about um, 10 years ago when my sons kind of, kind of took that over. Uh, but I continued that tradition um, of the Hello Nice People. And, and of course, my dad was my biggest critic. So uh, he, would, he would watch me and look at the advertisements and make uh, suggestions on how I might improve. And uh, it was always a work in progress, let's say. But uh, it's something I enjoy doing. And, and uh, it might sound a little bit corny, but uh, it's something people still say to this day, even though I don't do it on TV anymore, but people still say, uh, sometimes when they see me, hello, nice people. 1971, just a couple of years after I got out of college, he opened a store on I-85, about 10 miles south of Greenville, still in Anderson County. And that was uh, to help us get more business in the Greenville area. 
and we operated that store for uh, seven years. Uh, but then we sold it to the manager and my brother in 1977. And uh, my brother actually uh, sold his part, part out a couple years later, but the manager operated that store until 2000. At which time he had no children interested in the business, so he came to me and we talked, and so I bought it back. And we reopened in, in 2001. Um, and, and that's when we really changed our name from Maynard's of Belton to Maynard's Home Furnishings because we couldn't hardly be Maynard's of Belton and be located in Piedmont on I-85. I have two sons. My oldest son is, is Alderman. He graduated from Wofford as well as me. And then my younger son, Blake, also graduated from Wofford. And those two uh, came into the business after they got out of college. And uh, they've done a great job. They've been here a, a while now. and. Uh, I kind of turned over the basic management and operation of the company to them probably about six or seven years ago. But I'm still here and uh, I, I'm here to advise and I, I kind of handle the uh, back office duties. That's my primary responsibility now. Um, I do a little bit of the buying in, in certain areas, but uh, Alderman and Blake, they do pretty much all of the merchandising and the buying and uh, advertising and um, take care of the staff, etc. So. Um, so I'm still busy. I still work every day. I'm uh, 73 years old, but I uh, don't know what I'd do if I didn't work. So uh, I enjoy it still and uh, enjoy coming to work, enjoy the people. I'm a Belton boy, born and raised right here. The only time I didn't live in Belton is when I was in college. I'm very proud of Belton, and Belton is not unlike most small towns in, in the South, especially those that were textile-oriented, and, and we certainly were. But we work hard to, to try to make it a special place. We've got a lot of great assets in Belton. Not many places, small towns like this, have got a public tennis facility that's open for folks to play at no charge day or night and five great courts. Uh, we've got a center for the arts that's second to none. They do some great art shows and throughout the year they're open and do some really wonderful programs. And then of course our Belton Area Museum Association, the museum, they do about, uh, they have the permanent museum, but they do about four shows a year where they change it out. And also part of the museum, although it's a separate organization, is the South Carolina Tennis Hall of Fame, which opened in the Belton Museum in 1983 too. We have a Belton Alliance, which is a mini chamber of commerce that. I was involved in starting about uh, seven years ago, and that basically a mini chamber, but it's all volunteer. We have no staff, and we're trying to do some things to, uh, to develop Belton. The biggest accomplishment we've made is the what we call the rail trail, walking trail that goes from the Belton Library, and we'll eventually go all the way up to Leaderport Park, which will be about a little over a mile, a one-way, uh, nice walk, and it's getting a lot of use, and it certainly improved that part of town as you drive in. And, uh, so uh, we're real proud of that. But Belton's a great, great little town. It's a great place to work and live and raise a family. And the other thing that most, a lot of folks don't don't realize is how close it is to, to other places. I, I can be in downtown Greenville, depending on traffic, in 35 minutes. Of course, Anderson is 10 minutes away. Atlanta's a little over two hours. Charlotte's two hours. It's a really a, a central location.